Hi, Lucy. Hi, Trini. Look at that rail this week. What have you got in store for me? We are talking velvet. Now, it might not have been the most requested because there were lots of requests last week, many different things. But I thought it was something I wanted to tell you about because I think people put velvet in a certain box. A velvet jacket over a nice dress to me is classic velvet but I want to show you how we can make velvet a bit more edgy. There's lots of it about, so yeah, we need to know how to wear it. You know, life is about dressing on what you look really good in, but I think before we start any of this conversation, Lucy, what's your scarf challenge and what have you done? Well, I am um, taking a bit of print on print inspiration. I've got my yeah. Faux Fur Shrimps coat, and I bought this scarf from Zara last week. It was 19.99, and I thought it, the smaller print diffused the larger print. I love that look, Lucy, because I think you'd also mentioned last week that you had a uh, shrimp's coat you love, but the collar was sometimes an issue for you. Yes, because it's round. It's a round collar here. Yeah. I think what you've done is fab, Lucy, and I love the way it diffuses the shrimp's coat to be more wearable every day. I mean, it's a gorgeous coat. I love what you've done, and I love that combination of prints. Good job! Thank you. And I just want to say as well that I am wearing Fortuna on my eyelids. I'm going to show later as well a few of the italics and just show how easy they are. But it looks so glorious on you. Thank you. They are divine. Thank you. <laughs> they bring us a joy. So going back to velvet, um, I think most women, Lucy, are going to have a velvet jacket in their wardrobe. So this is the way if I was growing up being a conservative teenager and young adult, I would wear a velvet jacket, going to go and have, you know, a smart lunch with my parents. It's the way I would do smart. So I don't like doing that anymore. When I look for velvet, Lucy, and I have got a reasonably big velvet wardrobe, I look for things where in a way I'm dressing down the velvet. If we start with one of my favorite velvet purchases, and which I put this dress on for to show you two different ways, is do you remember last winter, Zara had a cape yes. in velvet and this is that kind of thing that you might wear with an evening dress. It might be that you have a vintage velvet cape in your cupboard, but it's, there's an incredible drama. Would I wear it like this with this? Funnily enough, I wouldn't. I could wear it over a long evening dress. So I think there is room for a beautiful evening coat in everyone's life that's universal, that you can wear over anything, and it keeps the glamour of the investment you've made in the item underneath. They are buyable. This was in Zara. It's probably still on eBay. But how can I do this during the day and make it funky and cool and not feel it has to be over an evening dress? What makeup are you wearing? I haven't got much on, but I've definitely de-stressed because I was really tired today. And I've just got my classic Wisdom and VB with some lip glow because it's my base for everything. And then I'll build up as we go on. Okay, Lucy, it's literally that kind of thing of really, we talk about a lot, but dressing something totally down. I've got on some um, mad shoes and I've got a stripy jumper. And then I still have that structure of the cape and it feels really cool. And I think a part of, you know, when you look more casual is that your hand can go in a pocket. It immediately, your body language is more casual and the outfit is thus made more casual. It's still glamorous and smart, but exactly what you said it's casual and wearable and then you know I might have it open during the day there's that tiny bit of red it wouldn't stop me just doing a little fun makeup because I wouldn't feel by glamorizing my makeup I make it smart again okay so you accenting the red though on the sleeve I'm putting on um Swainy and this is the color of Swainy and I think sometimes we can be scared that a bright lip makes something smarter but then if we look back in the main picture it just gives a flash that to me brings it together in a way, the bright lip makes it more fun. You look très Parisian chic. Très, I mean, I would go to Paris and feel really comfortable and the French women might come up and say, oh, you look chic. Oh my God, if a French woman would say that to me. Next one. Lucy, I'd love to show you the before of this in a way of how you would wear it if it was classic. But imagine you bought yourself because you saw it on Zara and thought that's fab, a, a velvet blazer with a pattern. So easy to kind of look dated. What I want to do is I want to put pattern on pattern and wear a cool modern jean to make the look ageless. It's got the trainer to play down the luxury of the velvet. And then it's got a pattern to just not make it all pretty Laura Ashley patterned jacket. 
Yeah. Do you know, I was thinking exactly Laura Ashley when you said old fashioned before. And then I might do something like, I'm just thinking, let's make it even more modern. So I'm putting on this bright pink lip, but that's Pia, lip to cheek, like that. I might do a tiny bit of Dahlia over it. Dahlia and Pia, I've never done. Like that, okay. Full length, I've got a kind of mad bag, which is another texture on it, but there's just this faintest bit of pink in it. So I've got pink on my lip, I've got the pink in the blouse, I've got the quite mad bag, and I just feel the whole look is different from a classic velvet blazer. I like what you said about um, it could be quite 70s inspired, but you've taken something and just made it look really fresh. Yeah, so you just have that, like in the 70s, they wouldn't have done a sort of modern white stack trainer. You know what, you would see the bottom of the shoe. In the 70s, the trousers never went all the way down. Anyway, next outfit. This is about color blocking, Lucy, and how, in a way, by choosing the right shades of velvet, you can really give it a kick up the ass. <laughs> what I loved is already on the trouser was inspiration for how I would do my color blocking, which was this lovely powder blue and I adore powder blue with red. I think it makes red fresh and modern, but they're wintry. Velvet is a wintry fabric. So what would I do on top to continue that story? I could either go a diffusion of the powder blue and go towards Eau de Neal. If you see there's a dirtiness to this coat, which is enhanced when you're in the brightness of another color. So we're gonna remove that. We could look at red, but when you're color blocking red, you really need to make sure so the red is not too dirty. That red kind of works. Yeah, it's got a nice level of brightness. It hasn't quite got that acidity of the trouser. And the velvet now is just a really wonderful part of making up an outfit. Another little tip I'm gonna suggest to you ladies is if you have a lovely dry cleaner who's got a, a lovely woman in there who does some seamstressing, and when you have a, a sort of boring pair of velvet trousers, and I'm gonna show you in a minute another pair of velvet trousers, but they've got too tight, you could consider getting a bright stripe of grow grain mm -hmm. and putting them in the seam and it changes the whole trouser. Oh, that's such a good tip. You've got to be slightly advanced sewing to do that, but you know, that kind of alteration, you find the grow grain, grow grain is really beautiful with velvet. You find the grow grain and you go to dry clean, you say, can you literally just like you're putting in the whole, make the seam bigger. So can I just ask, because these colours are quite, to me, they're quite cool. Yeah. But it's weird because red's like a warm colour, but the blue's very cool. So who would suit this combination? Everyone has their own red. You might suit a plummy red, a bright red, an orangey red. This is a pinky red. So yeah. this is sort of that neutral. It's a little bit cool, yes. And the blue is sort of, it's not quite icy blue. There's a tiny bit of dirtiness in that blue, but not as much as the teal. So to me, these are kind of, the neutral in the kind of turquoisey pale blue story. This is a slightly colder red, I think, than that. Trini, what kind of makeup would you do? What I might do is I might do a sort of soup sort of red, but in a subtle way. So like Mama Sheer Shimmer. Ah. There's the nod, but there's not the whole enchilada. So I'm no longer a pinky person, but I've just got that little waft. I've got a waft of red. Yeah, Mama's such a great shade for that. Oh, so good. It's just whenever you don't know what else to use and you want a hint of red, Mama, Shia Shimmer is the way to go. Just want to chat, Lucy, about velvet as a texture when you don't look brilliant in black. A trick I learned to do and what introduced me to the concept of wearing black more often is to change the texture of the black I was wearing. But if I have velvet, there's a softness and there's a reflection of light in the velvet, which does something for your face. So I might just put on... Hikati. Hikati is the sort of pewter. Molten pewter deliciousness. I've really whacked it on quickly. And then I'd probably do like a sort of quite warm lip. I might do like a tashi. Yeah, oh, I like that. I like that. It's quite sexy and fun. And then if you look at it from far away. And then bring that whole look together, Lucy, because for me, this is daytime. I'm in a very hot Zara old jumper. But I would probably then you know, really dress it down. Maybe even put the scarf over, like a white bag. You know, that's not, ooh, it's a velvet trouser suit. No, it's like, she looks really comfortable and I want it. And chic. That's what we want.
that. So many people can ask where this scarf's from, Lucy. I can't bloody remember. I remember the moment in which I thought, oh, what a great scarf, but I don't even remember what shop it was in. Sorry. This is a story, Lucy, of chiffon and velvet and why the two shouldn't always meet. And I have these trousers that I got from a, I think I got them from Mango, but I always love them because they're slightly wide leg and there's a little print. But I've always found it difficult to work out what to wear with them. I remembered my godmother had given me a 1950s Emilio Pucci for Saks coat dress. If I was doing a classic having lunch with my grandmother day, God rest her soul, she died many years ago, but somebody would appreciate it's an elegant outfit. It's a pattern of velvet, which is not dissimilar to the mango pattern. But I felt there was a, something a little bit still chiffon, but it's like, how can I wear this? So then Lucy, I've done polar neck lurex top from Zara. It's got a little sleeve thing that I cut in one side. I have yet to do the other, but I think that makes the arm look more modern. And a short sleeve to me is quite classic. So I want to do something interesting with the wrist and the arm. Would I then have a kind of chainmail bag? And then probably, like what I do a lot of the time when I wear chocolate brown, I quite like taking an orangey shade like Shasha, which is of a modern enough orange, not that kind of lovely salmon you'd get at number seven that your grandmother would buy, but it's that sharp, bright orange, some Myco on top, that just changes the look and feel of the outfit because now that makeup to me is not the makeup my grandmother would wear. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's like adding that, you know, like in a, in a meal, if you had a really sharp sauce or vinaigrette to go with. Yes, yeah, it's the sharp sauce. I'm thinking which is the right neckline because I think it's really important when you wear a polar neck, Lucy. If I wear a polar neck like that and I did that, it makes the neckline feel a bit more old fashioned, do you see? Yeah, definitely. I quite like that high polar neck with this because I think it feels a bit cooler. Not breaking up the line of your neck. Yeah, we have to remember all these things, Lucy, for necklines because necklines is not just about your boob and your height and all that stuff, but it's about what necklines you wear together and how they go together and how you can make them look old fashioned or cool. So I've got to really research what's in my head and get it out there in some clothing that I can show you. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more. Lucy, this is just the madness of a moment that I absolutely adore. So I got this coat from Reserved. It's like my duvet coat, but it's velvet. It's like your sofa, your granny sofa. This is about taking a classic velvet color, you know, like burgundy, navy, green, and black, and how you make it mad. So instead of doing black with it, which would dull it down, or white, which would just really make it like a sheet on the sofa, I don't know. Taking a really bright purple, I love purple and green, and then adding some sequins. Oh my goodness, where are those trousers from? These are Essentials Antwerp. Bought these in the sale, Lucy. But if I want to diffuse that sense of you're wearing a sofa, then I might just do my scarf trick and add in that little bit of joy, or, I just saw something else from very far away. I'm gonna put on, it's probably insane, but why not? Because velvet sequins and what am I missing? I was going to say some feathers, okay? Cause I just got this essential Antwerp's oh my brooch, gosh. which one string drive said, Trini, you'll love it. And I'm thinking I love it, but maybe it's not working there. But what might work is some kind of texture. I might just do that on a day when I'm really cold and I want to feel color, even though it's nearly too many colors. That colour is in the trousers. I mean, the yellow feathers, I would never have guessed when you said I'm missing something. I probably wouldn't have ever guessed. Yellow feather brooch. Shall I end with something just classic? So for the finale, Lucy, it's about wearing what I very rarely do, which is that plunging neckline. I'm doing a smoky um, universe. I'm taking a bit of Sasha now. When you do something that's really sexy, You've got to think how much an earring might make it sexier or fuddy-duddy it up. This is with the earring. I'm kind of loving that. What do you think? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'm just feeling it. And you know what? That flirtation of an earring can feel quite sexy. So let's see the full look. Oh, I'm feeling sexy! This is the final look, Luz. Mamma mia! 
Mamma mia, mamma mia, mamma mia, I wanna go out, I wanna go out, I wanna go out. Let's just deconstruct. This was a really quite badly cut um, jacket. Just a bit like there's no fart flap and it's Zara doing it a bit cheaply. So open, it looks a bit boring. And if you decide you're going to belt a velvet jacket, you need to always belt the velvet jacket because the one thing about velvet is it marks bland. Yeah. And that little friend, I've got to actually do it up behind because otherwise my boobs will pop out. Because it's velvet, it's actually staying quite snug. It's like I've got a kind of black tie dress on. This way that it doesn't open at the back actually makes it look nice. The sleeves are long, I'm feeling good. It's so rare that I wear a deep cleavage. If you have big boobs, Lucy, what I love about a Tolle lingerie, and I'm gonna give them a shout out because Chloe uses their bras all the time, is they always have this deep bit here. So if you've got a clavage, um, the last thing is you want to see the flesh down there and they have this really deep bit under so you can do that beautiful lacy bra moment and this is what it deserves. But when you're a bit more flat, like me, you can do it with nothing but some sticky tape. So, darling, let's go back to next week. I've got a list on my phone, hold on. Okay, I'll show you mine if you show me yours, Lucy. So I've got one which is about jewellery and it's about brooches, how and where you use them, long versus short necklaces and lengths, size of ornaments at the bottom according to your breast shape and your height, earrings and how else you can use earrings, not just on your ears. So lots of things around that. We've got capes. I love a cape. Are you courageous enough to wear a cape? If you find some antique ones, how do you make them look modern? We've got gilets, which I know has been requested a lot. They're not always easy to find in the shops, Lucy, but they're something that becomes a wardrobe essential. This is mad, but if I could have only Eight coats, I couldn't put it to six, eight coats in my wardrobe, what would they be? I mean, that for me, as you know, is going to be tricky. Purple mixed textures, green, winter white, dressing down dresses. My sequin shimmer, shimmer collection, but that'll be an hour's film. What else have you got? Um, I've pretty much got the same as you. I'd love to see you tell me which eight coats you could survive with. I know, I think it might be quite tricky for me, but you can't steer the audience too much, so think of all the other options. Anyway, and in the meantime, I need you to come back to me quickly because I got to start prepping. Okay, okay darling. Wait, literally, yeah. There's one thing we haven't said. What? Well, why do you think I'm wearing black? Well, what was yesterday? Black Friday. Start off every year. Trini London's just done Friday, but we have so many people now who follow the brand in so many different time zones. And we thought we'd actually do it the whole weekend. So we're doing it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday till 11.59 p.m. GMT. And it's 10% off products across the site. T's and C's apply. And you can even sneakily, if you go in the stacks page, there sort of is really a bigger discount. Um, so lots of things. And if you just want to begin your stack, if you want to increase your stack journey so that it becomes a tower, if you want to buy our bestsellers like BFF and BFF De-Stress, Miracle Blur. Yes, I can highly recommend BFF De-Stress in Lucy. I'm sure you can highly recommend BFF De-Stress in Lucy. It's the one I wear. You're close to my heart every single day, darling. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Lucy. You too, I'm off to shop. Oh, you're off to shop. Good girl.